refresh my uh, open. All right, so you can see my, my keystrokes over here and I'll be making a hat. So I'm gonna start off with a 20 sided cylinder. You don't have to, um, you don't have to do 20 sided, but I'm just going, that's just the way I'm doing it. Um, all right, hold down D, V, pull the pivot point all the way to the bottom. Uh, press W to move, E to rotate, and R to scale. I think you already know how to do that, but in case if you share this with anyone else. Okay, so I'm going to hold, so I'm gonna press W, it's already on move. Um, I wanna hold X to snap to this grid, just to make sure it's on the bottom. You don't have to do this, but I like to do it. I'm going to scale this up a lot. I usually like to work on a really big, um, I like to work on really large margins because when it comes to it's just it's just easier. That's all I want to say. It's just easier. All right, I hold shift right click. Mm, no, cute. Okay. Shift right click to no. Go back to option mode. Shift right click to pull up my tool menu. I drag to multi cut and I'm going to hold down control and I'm um, control it pulls the um, cut all the way around and hold down shift I'm gonna to snap it to a certain percentage I'm gonna snap it to like yeah say 10% that works Q to exit the um, yeah Q to exit right now I have soft select on but if I press B I turn it off uh, going to select all these faces and the way I do that is I click one face and then double click the face right next to it now I have all the faces control E to extrude and I'm going to, eh, that looks right. Eh, it looks about correct, yeah. Now, you don't have to do this. I'm going to do this because I'm a little crazy. Um, I want my hats to be very hat-like, so it needs to have an inside. Um, I'm going to select all these faces on the bottom and I'm going to get rid of this um, thing here. <sighs> all right. And I'm going to deselect the faces by holding control and clicking and dragging. All right. So I'm gonna just scale this in. I press four to look at my frame, my wireframe. And then I'm just going to drag this in a little bit. Perfect. And then control E to extrude. I'm gonna extrude inwards. I wanna keep it thick on the inside. The reason why I do that is because when we use bend deformers, um, we don't want weird. We don't want weird stuff happening. So that's why I do that. Okay, five to go back to regular object view. Shift, right click, um, and drag to multi cut. And I'm just gonna make some cuts here. So let's do one here. Let's do one here. Let's try to keep it even. It does not need to be even. Um, it's better if you do, but you don't have to do it like that. Uh, I'm gonna do maybe. I'm holding down Control Shift um, to hold down. And I'm just gonna make some more cuts here. Um, this is so the bend deformer has some vertices to grab onto, and you'll you'll see it. Okay, I'm also going to select all these faces, and well, not faces, edges. Um, I'm gonna grab these edges. Oh my god! And I'm holding shift while I'm grabbing these edges as well. Um, you can see it over here. I'm going to scale these and scale it just like a little bit thinner. We want it thick, but not too thick. Um, also, I realized we actually need to grab all of these edges as well. In fact, we should just be grabbing the faces, but I'm not doing that. I don't know why. I'm just not. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to make it a little thinner. That's probably the thickness I want. Yep, pretty good. So go back to object mode. Um, yep, pretty happy with that. Okay, so now let's uh, start making some shapes. I'm just gonna make it a little bit more like that, more like the reference image that Callum gave me. Okay, so I have I have my um, custom tool set here, but if you need, um, if you want to make a bend deformer, you go to deform, nonlinear bend and you should see a line up here make sure you're in the object mode if you're in face mode and you try to here if you're in like face mode and you want to make a bend deformer it's not gonna work 
See, no objects were selected. It needs to have objects. Cool. Okay. I'm gonna make a slight bend just so I can see what direction this is in. And I'm I'm okay with this. So I'm just gonna move my bend deformer like this. I'm gonna press E. I'm gonna hold J to snap rotate. I don't know why it does that. When I hold down a key, just like, eh, J times 40. No, I didn't. Anyway. Cool. Move this high bound down. So what that does is it just like determines like how much of the, um, how much on one side you want to curve your object. Cool. I'm going to make this curve pretty strong. Uh, in the reference image, the cap is almost touching the brim. So I'm just going to move it in. And we see a little bit of deformation on this side. Uh, there are ways we can mitigate against that. Um, for now, I am just going to instead have this curl as much as I can. And we get a little bit of artifacting as well. That's when we don't have enough polys. Uh, I'm okay with that. Yep, I'm just gonna turn this back on. And if you go on vertex, the reason why, uh, oh, and it's not there. It really depends on like the way it's shaded. Um, sometimes you'll see it, sometimes you don't. Um, yeah, I you know you just have to like keep an eye out for it. But if we go back to object mode, all right, we're good. Um, I am going to Add some, I'm gonna add a little bit of curve also to this um, to this brim here. And the way I'm gonna do that is I'm gonna go to vertex, click this center point. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm like wondering if I wanna add any more vertices to the top, I don't. Okay, so I hold shift greater than, um, do it again, greater than, greater than, greater than, and I hold, press B. Uh, hold B, middle mouse drag to determine uh, how much influence you have for your soft select. Um, I see that it's grabbing a little bit of the hat. Let's see how much that affects it. I say R. Mm, it's doing something. I could always fix this, these two vertices. Um, I could always fix these two later. I won't worry about that for now. So. Let's make it a little bit long ways. Yeah. Okay. I hold shift less than, less than, less than. There we go. I'm going to just make the brim a little bit more cap like. Again, not worrying about these two vertices. They're very, it's going to be, that's a very easy fix. I just want it to be more rounded. All right. Good enough government work. All right. I say object mode. I go back to vert vertex. Um, I'm not happy with these two vertices, obviously, so I'm going to get out of soft select, grab these two vertices, hold Q, or press Q to get rid, get rid of my handles, and then I press W to move, and I'm going to not really know what I'm doing. Why are you, there you go, okay. Because I have this bend deformer here, um, the way I move it's going to look a little weird, um, but there we go fixed it. Cool. Yeah, I'm just gonna admire this a little bit. I like to do like a, a couple look arounds to make sure um, I like what I see. All right, I'm gonna go to object mode, click that, I didn't need to move it. And I'm gonna say this button here is delete history, delete construction history, it's gonna delete that bend deformer. So now we can move the hat around freely. Great. And I actually might want to do a little bit of a curve on the other side of this hat as well. So I'm just going to do the same thing before. Um, I have my bend, my um, quick select here, but go to deform. Again, nonlinear, bend. Cool. And I'm going to give it a little bit of curvature so I know what I'm doing. Hold down J to um, rotate snap. And then W, move right here. Okay, again, get rid of our, oh, not that one, get rid of our high bound and curve. And I just want like a little bit, because in the reference, there was like a little curve on this side too. It's a hat, it's a fancy hat. 
Lovely. Wonderful. And I'm actually gonna... How curly do I want this? Have a little that way. Cool. Let me just check to make sure I'm still recording. Lovely. Okay. Again, delete history. Cool. What direction I wanted to go with this hat. And I figured it out. Um, I am going to smooth out this mesh. So you go to mesh, smooth, and one, yeah, one division. And it actually makes the mesh pretty smooth. I'm pretty happy with it. Um, obviously, I think maybe some faces could um, be a little bit more narrow. It is like a little bit bulgy on top. So I'm gonna just quick fix this. So shift um, greater than, greater than, greater than b to select a little bit more faces there is some selection going on here but that's okay that's not a huge issue what we really want is to make sure this inside is also selected and i'm just going to make it a little more musketeer like all right great and i'd say that's pretty hot yeah that's pretty hot looking i like this little like woo on the side um i uh, did get a request okay uh, specifically, the request was to make it look like it was pinned on one side. So I'm going to oh, select my object, another bend deformer, and I am going to move this here. So what you can do is you can select faces. You can select certain faces. So if I get Uh, wow 2600 2600 faces okay or tries okay now i'm gonna start deleting some stuff because we don't really need all the triangles everywhere in fact actually in here we don't need any of these faces um just to uh cut down our poly count i'm pretty happy with the way the mesh looks right now um yeah in fact let's actually file import <laughs> There it is. Haha, -ha, there's our face. And I'm actually gonna rename this to hat. Cool. Move this hat up and it looks backwards, so I'm gonna rotate that around. Hold J to snap rotate. W, move back. Kinda small. R to scale. And this actually lets me know that the brim might be too big and the actual cap itself might be too small. Um, excuse me. Nope, that looks correct. Ooh, ooh, isn't she lovely? It's kind of creepy seeing her with, I'm just gonna turn this off. There we go. Yep, all right. Time to delete some. Delete some. Edges. Always easier to take away than add, I always say. A lot of people always say. All right, so the first place I'm gonna take away from is the back. I always take away from the back first because no one, ain't no one's gonna see that. So maybe every other one, all the way up to, let's say here. I'm actually going to keep this here. We actually kind of need the geometry here, uh, but we definitely don't need it back here. So control delete. Cool. Um, a lot of stuff just happened now. Not super crazy about that, but it is what it is. Vertex, just make sure. Okay, we're good. All right. Object control one to isolate. Let me get rid of this thing here. 
and then start deleting all the faces on the inside because we don't need the faces on the inside. Delete and then just double click the faces, control delete. Cool, that saved us. Look at that, we just saved all a bunch of polygons. Okay, uh, do I want to delete the faces on the top of the head? I kind of do. Oh, I know where we can delete some edges too. Haha, <laughs> here. Uh, we don't, mm, okay, when we go up here, yeah, don't need this one. Delete that. Yep, still works. All right. And a way you can tell if it works is if the shading gets a little wonky. Um, so for example, I delete these two and the shading gets like, oh, uh, oh, that, that's a little crazy. Then that's how you know you need uh, more vertices in that area. Yep, see, yeah, it's, it's a little bit better. Okay. Edges, we're more. Okay, so we can delete this one for sure. It's a little bit redundant. And then I can actually move this one up a little. Yep. I want to keep these edges because without these edges, you want like that nice, like mm, that nice curve. All right, now on the bottom, there's definitely some edges we can get rid of at the bottom. Um, I'll probably, let's see what happens when we get rid of this one. Yeah, that's okay. That's fine. All right, cool. And where are we at, 1908? Um, yeah, honestly, the maximum is like 10, the maximum is 10K. We don't really have to make it super, super low poly. This is as happy as I'm gonna be. If you did some simulation, we were switching in and out hats, like tap to change hats, then I would probably worry. Um, but I think we're okay. Um, this end here is looking a little pointy, so I'm just gonna select this vertex, move it in a little. Just, it was just too pointy before. Yeah, much better. By the way, um, your mesh should be um, soft edged already, soft edged already if it isn't like that. So let's pretend it's like this. So pretend your mesh looked like this. Um, the way you um, fix that is you go to mesh display, soften edge, and then you can go to display, polygons, that's my chair, my foot fell asleep. Cool. Uh, polygons and soft hard edges. Where are you? Soft hard edges, there you are. All good. Cool. So badass. All right, let's get a feather. Um, feathers you can do as a single plane. So I'm going to E to rotate, J to snap, rotate. There we go. R to scale and we're going to make a feather. Polyplane, uh, subdivision width. We only need like, we only need like one. And then uh, for, well, two. For subdivision height, uh, let's do six to make like a, yeah, it's a pretty plumy feather. Cool. And then this is where you're kind of pushing vertices around. You could push each vertice around like this and eh, that's not fun. Let's do modeling toolkit. We're gonna symmetry, object X. Ah, now we're thinking of portals. Okay. W and just move, I'm just gonna move some stuff around until I get something I like. This is where you usually would, um, would, should um, put up a ref re reference image. I am not, I don't know why I'm not, I really should. Oh, girl. Oh, yep. That's some plumage if I ever saw one. I'm going to make it a little bit crazy. It's a musketeer. Musketeers are fashionable. Actually, I really don't know if they were. You're fierce. W. Mm, yeah, I'm pretty okay with that. Hey, you know, we have the polygons to spare. Actually, do we have the polygons to spare? Plus that. Oh, yeah, we definitely do. I'm going to actually double side this. So what I did was, uh, not that. So what I did was I selected this object, Q. Okay, um, I'm gonna select these faces. I'm going to get out of symmetry because I don't need it anymore. 
and I'm going to say control E to extrude. I'm just going to extrude just a little bit. Yep, looks great. Object mode. Uh, it is she is she a little thick? Let me just make it a little thinner. That's a bit much for a plume. Yeah. Okay. Now UV. Oh, I thought I was gonna burp. Okay. Click this. Um, here. If you don't have this UV thing, um, in your Maya window, just go to Windows, General Modeling Editors, UV Editor. Excuse me. Okay, so um, as you can see, our UV is super distorted. I don't like that. What you do is you go to, get this all in one window, um, go to planar. Uh, right now we're getting the UVs projecting from the side. Um, there's a faster way to do it. I don't remember. Uh, you just go here. Oh gosh, okay. <laughs> planar. Okay, object mode. Planar. Click this little like doohickey handle, this little T down here. Click that. You're going to see um, some transform things happen. Click the circle. Um, this is going to work exactly like your um, object select. I heard my cat. OK, I'm going to hold J to snap and rotate it 90 degrees. It's hard to see it now, I know, but it, it's worth it. OK, now we're going to stretch this out. And you see when I stretch it out, the UV over here, um, it shows the projection of that UV. Cool. Now this is a feather. We want this to make sense. We're going to make it look like this. Perfect. Uh, and that is almost done. I'm going to take these edges and then we're going to start doing some cutting and sewing. Uh, now I'm thinking about how I want to UV it. I'm just going to do this. You could do this as a single plane. Most feathers you usually do as a single plane. I'm just not doing that for now. Oh, if we really want to get creative with this, we could actually turn this into a chain. We could actually rig this and turn it into a chain sim, but I'm not doing that. That's not what this tutorial is. Maybe another time. <sighs> yep, so you can always say cut and sew. We're going to say cut. Cut like that. Right click, UV, UV shell. Mm. It's still connected somewhere. Uh, see, it's connected down here. That's okay. No, it's not okay. Edge. That edge. This edge. I don't know if you can see. I just selected the two edges on the bottom. I'm going to cut those. Cut. Um, UV, UV shell. Okay, control U. Control U. Yeah. There we go. Control U. And then control U. Yeah, I didn't like that. Oh, <laughs> control U, I thought I was saying control Y, control Z. Mm. I don't like the way that UV'd. Okay, I have to go to UV, unfold, unfold U. That's why it didn't work. Let's try it again. Hmm, hmm. Yeah, fully disappeared, lovely. This happens sometimes. Um, sometimes it does that. I don't really like when it does it. There's a way you can just say, just make a new planar projection of this. Then, UV shell, control U, there we go. Control L to lay out. Awesome. Pick this one, control U, it disappeared. Of course, let's try unfolding along V. Control U, it went somewhere. So that's okay, it happens. It happens all the time. Hmm. Sometimes it's good to also isolate this. I isolate it by pressing control one, uh, UV shell. There you are. I found you. You can't hide from me. There you are. Okay, control U. Nope. Move the other way. I'm going to make you work. You are going to unfold, damn it. <sighs> Yeah, some of these sometimes just take like way more finessing. Mm -hmm. Do this. You are just being so uncooperative. I don't know why. Why are you like this? Why are you like this? 
F2 snap. Because I done snapped on this. Alright. Nope. something. There we go. All right, everything, select all your UV shells, control L. There it is. Okay, I am not a fan of this. I'm, I don't like this. So what I do is I take this UV shell, move it on top of this one because they're, the feather's gonna be the same on both sides. And then I say, uh, not align, snap, arrange and layout, stack shells. Just going to really make sure these two are the same here. Make sure these are definitely stacked. There we go. Much better. I'm gonna move this. And you shouldn't be doing this, but I'm doing this because it's a feather and like no one's gonna care. But you really shouldn't be um, taking single islands and yeah. Uh, do as I say, don't do as, don't do as I do. I don't know. Um, I wouldn't recommend, um, taking individual shell, individual shells and doing this because it will cause problems later on, but I'm doing this for now because it's a feather and it literally does not matter. It is like very thin. No one's going to notice. Okay, cool. I am very happy with this. Okay, object mode. Control 1 to unisolate select. I'm going to minimize these for now. But what I kind of do want to do is... I actually want to go back. Where's my window? No, not you. I just checked. Okay, the UV actually looks pretty good. This is like looking a little bit stretched. I can always fix that. There we go. You kind of want these checkers to look as square-like as you can. Before it was looking a little, before it was looking a little bit too thin. So I was just trying to make it look a little more even. Cool. Get out there. Object mode. Uh, we're pretty good on. Yeah, 1976. Um, if this is the only hat in this scene, we could actually add a few more polys to this. Um, so I'm just going to go to object mode. I'm going to mesh smooth. Yeah, that's pretty good. Okay. And I'm just going to put a de bend deformer on this. Oh my goodness. What are you? There we go. Bend deformer. Bend. E. Hold J. There we go, and that's how you curve a feather. I say so. Okay. Keep that, but get rid of that. There we go. Oh, she's so pretty. Wow. Wow. Here, I want like a nice curl on this feather. But it looks like my edge are, my edges are kind of breaking a little bit. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to multi-cut. I'm gonna add, add a little, like, Add a little bit more division on this face here so it doesn't look like my edges are breaking as much. Another one on this side. Mm. Okay, cool. It looks like they're breaking much less. Okay, cool. 
And I can actually grab these two at the same time and move them around. Oh, but then, yeah, weird things happen. So I can move it, but when I rotate it, weird things might happen. So I'm just going to just kind of get it in position. Cool. And I could always add, like, more to this bend later. Um, and I'm going to delete history. E. Um, also, if I was so inclined, I could turn it into a group, but I'm not going to go that far with you yet. Just kind of position it so it's like, you know. Uh, yeah, yeah. I don't actually want to make this yick. I want to make it yick. Aw, oh, yeah. Let's make another one. Why not? I press Control D to duplicate, and I'm just going to rotate it. Move it up. Move it up, move it up. Ah, uh, love it. Oh, but you are shooting through the cap, and I don't, I don't love that. I'm actually going to take these faces. R and W. Woo! There we go. Yeah, now it's this. Oh yeah. Object mode. like that you are cutting into this hat. Oh, you're giving me so much frustration. Yes. Good enough for government work. Cool. All together, that is under 3k. Wow, we have room for three more of these hats, but I'm not gonna do that. Um, for now, I'm going to send a screenshot. I'm gonna do a little for it though, girl. Ooh, mm, mm. She just has a weird shaped head, that's why. And take a screenshot. All right, uh, and this isn't UV. Before I take a screenshot, I need to UV, the, UV this. So, I'm gonna take a planar projection. All right, create planar. That's about as good as we're gonna get. Okay, edge B to get rid of get out soft select. Um, some ways people have done this in the past is you can make a cut here. You want to make your UV cuts where people aren't really gonna see them. Okay, I'm gonna make a cut here. Cut. Cut, 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 cut. I'm actually gonna make a cut back here. Yes. Cut. Cut. Okay. UV shelves. Okay. Control U to unfold. 
control you to unfold that. Come on. Yes. Unfold that. Great. Everything is unfolded. Grab this all. Control L to lay out. Yeah, that is how a cookie crumbles. Sick. Okay, this is the top side. You want to arrange your UVs in a way that kind of makes sense um, because you're going to get weird stuff happening and weird stuff is bad. So that means I know that this UV shell needs to be... You kind of just want your edges to be in the same... Like, you want your edges to talk to each other or at least be facing each other. Uh, that's really what you want. And I'm actually going to expand this a little bit. Um, we're trying to take up as much space as we can so we get as much detail as we can. The more space we take up in our UV, um, the better. The more high quality we can make our texture. Great. Fantastic. All right. So this is ready for UV. What we do is um, I go back to object mode. I'm going to get out of here. Um, minimize these two. Um, I'm going to make new material. I'm going to call it... Uh, let's just call it Lambert. Um, this is what we call a clown pass. It's not really a clown pass. Um, I'm just calling it that. It actually means something else, but I'm calling it a clown pass. Um, make it red so it's very bright and very obviously a different material from this. And this will be its own material. And I'm going to call it assign new material. Yes, assign material and we're going to make this yellow we just need to make it obviously a different color assign existing material lambert 2 what the heck what lambert did i make guess what i fucking just did oh my gosh you have to cuss on my stream i'm not Are streaming, streaming? no <laughs> you need a light or something that just says like streaming or not like i know air. light outside on my All door right. So I reached out to Twin Mask and I was like, hey, I'm opening up costume commissions, blah, blah, blah. Guess who I found? Oh my gosh. Like, people who are listening to this are going to think I'm so nerdy. Okay. Oh, are you actually recording? Uh, yeah, I am recording. Oh, should I stop? Um, I'm exporting. Export selection. You go to file, export selection. And um, we're going to go to, yeah, Callum. Okay, Google, turn on the lights. Hot. Wow, it's back to well. It got dark fast. Export selection. Oh, we didn't triangulate though. Make sure this is on, especially if you're importing to Lens Studio. Lovely. I hope that helps. 